What's up, my name is Wilson and welcome to the studio. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand what sidechain is and what it's used for. And we're gonna cover the most common use case that I see, which is mixing drums. In music production, sidechain is a technique where the volume of one track is lowered when another track plays. It allows the kick drum or other prominent sounds to cut through the mix by lowering another element. So. There are two schools of thought, sidechain and volume shaping, right? The, and it confuses so many people because often the effect of volume shaping is desired, but the whole subject is generalized by the term sidechain. What I'm saying is there's a difference, a big difference. Two sentences, here we go. Sidechain compression automatically lowers the volume based on the signal of the other track, while volume shaping manually adjusts the volume over time using automation. Now I'm gonna show you how to volume shape efficiently and for free if you just let me explain why I think it's better. So we can see with the compressor method of sidechain that it's not ducking the affected layer all the way to zero. And that's because it's super hard to balance this attack and release. Whereas with the shaper, we can see this deeper attenuation here, and that's because we have direct control over the shape. So that's the big benefit here, and I'm gonna let you listen to the difference. Here's with the compressor. You can hear sort of the tail of that bass. It's fluctuating a little bit, but it's not going all the way down to zero or anywhere close to it. Here's the shaper as a comparison. You can hear that it's really ducking and clamping down and getting out of the way so that kick drum can can shine through. And super transparent sidechain is really good in genres like D&B and trap where the tails of your kick and snare are super short. So you don't want to have that pumping going into the bass that follows. Next up, the tutorial. So the key thing about volume shaping with the MIDI shaper is having a MIDI trigger. And by MIDI trigger, I mean a series of MIDI notes that follows the kick and snare pattern. And a way that you could do that is just by taking any MIDI note. Let's just create a new MIDI clip here as an example. We'll go C3, the default note, stretch that out. And all I did was just copy and paste this MIDI note along every kick and snare. That's it. Now that you have your MIDI trigger, we need to put this Shaper MIDI device on that channel. I'm going to put the link to this project file somewhere in the comments. So you can download that and save the preset directly from here if you wish. It'll make it a little bit easier. And I'm also going to show you how to build it just in case you want to watch the video all the way through. So to create this sucker, here's what you're going to do. We're going to search MIDI Shaper in Ableton. Make sure you're in the all results section. Uh, we'll go ahead and double click this. The first thing I like to do is change my grid size all the way up to 16. That's going to give us the most control. Now we're going to start dialing in the shape. What I like to do is drag this one all the way up. So we like to take this guy and go out six increments. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. We're gonna take this bottom one next and go by two. And what we'll do is give this one a little bit of slope. You can do that by holding Alt and dragging. Next up, I'm going to Shift click. So hold the Shift button on your keyboard and remove this at the top. Then we're gonna double click over here at the beginning to add a new line. So let's go ahead and give that a little bit of slope and we'll drag this guy up to about halfway here. This curve on the beginning is gonna ease us into the gain reduction and this curve on the end is gonna ease us out. So this is how we're gonna control that pumping effect. But we have one more setup step first. We need to map this to a utility device. Here's the trick, guys. You can sidechain anything. It can be a single base. It can be a whole group. I went ahead and printed the base group from this song. So this is going to be everything that I want to sidechain. The bass, the hi-hats, the effects, everything all together. So there's the little mix minus. So the key here is that we want to put the utility device 
on the group or track that we're trying to sidechain to the kick or snare. So you can just take your utility, and in my case, I'm gonna drag it on to this return. Okay, back up to the MIDI trigger. We're gonna click Map, and then back down to the track that we wanna sidechain, and we're gonna map it to the gain. Let's go back to the MIDI shaper and switch over. We're gonna click this little hamburger icon, um, I want to change mod to remote here and just set the value at 50%. And now if we play, we're going to see how it works. So you can hear that side chain kicking in. Whew, I'm glad I did that right. Let's watch how this gain knob moves on the utility as well. So we can see that fluctuating according to the MIDI trigger. And now for the moment of truth. Let's see if this sidechain works. Perfect. Awesome. A couple of things. I want to show you how you can make it pump more or and also um, sort of like a dry wet for this. Okay. So if I hold Alt and adjust this curve, that's going to add to the pumping effect. And this dot at the bottom is going to adjust sort of the dry wet of the side chain. Let's wrap up by manipulating one more example here. I'm going to play with the depth and sort of the release of the side chain and just let you experience that pumping effect and, and the precision one more time. So that's how you can mess with it and dial it in to the way that you prefer. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back here soon. Make sure to like and subscribe.